Good morning. I just want to welcome us all here today. Our theme today is Infinite Mystery. And today the call to worship comes from Psalm 104 verses 1 through 9. Praise the Lord my soul. Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. The Lord wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches the heavens like a tent and lays the beams of his upper chambers on their waters. He makes the cloud his chariot and rides the wings of the wind. He makes winds his messengers, flames of fire his servants. He set the earth on its foundations 
it can never be moved. You covered it with the watery depths as with a garment. The water stood above the mountains. But at your rebuke, the waters fled. At the sound of your thunder, they took to flight. They followed over the mountains. They went down into the valleys to the place you assigned for them. You set a boundary they cannot cross. Never again will they cover the earth. If you will please bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, during the service today, I ask that you bring a peace and a presence over this service and all those who are involved. 
I pray that you would be with our sister Allie as she brings our message today and show us your infinite mystery, Lord, and, and how we can go forward in our day-to-day -day lives. And I just pray that you will open our ears and our eyes, Lord, today through this service. And we ask all these things in your son's most holy name. Amen. Hello on this glorious, wonderful day. It's so good to be with you and to bring a reminder to you of, of how we can respond to that infinite glory of our wonderful Heavenly Father. As we give monetarily and give of our time and our talents, um, let's examine those things that we can do to make our congregational life more full and to help the congregational life of others in our congregations, to give in our neighborhoods, to give in the community, to give with the mission center and to the world church. So I'd like to really encourage you today to, to think about those things and to find the ways you can best give we can give through e-tithing. If you go to seaofchrist.org, you can set up a, a, a regular giving program that will give automatically. Or you can talk with your congregational financial officer and find out the best way to give, especially in these times if, if you're not able to meet every Sunday. And we still need those that help in the monetary way and always we need your ministry to be a part of your congregation in in uh, whatever way is needed we thank you for your giving and let us now pray dear heavenly father you are infinitely wonderful and infinitely great and you give with infinite blessings we pray that as we give back just a little bit of this, that you will bless it with your fullness, with your glory, that it might magnify, and that in our giving, we can also save wisely, and we can spend responsibly so that our giving can be more generous. We know that generosity is uh, different for each one of us. Help us to examine our lives and examine what we can do to give generously in our situation. Help us that through this reflection that we might create a better tomorrow for our families, our friends, for the mission of Christ and the world. We thank you so very much for those blessings. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and pray in his name. Amen. Gracious God, walk with me, hold my hand, whisper in my ear, tell me your will, open my heart, and prepare my spirit. Fill your spirit into me. Allow me to radiate the peaceful calm that is you. Let there be peace in my words, my thoughts, and my actions. Let there be peace in my workplace, my church, and my home. Let me bring that peace everywhere I go. Weave it through my daily interactions. May everyone I encounter today see your peace in me. Let them know your presence through me. Where there are harsh words, let them be dulled. Where there are hard hearts, let them be softened. Allow me to offer your grace freely to those in need of it. Bring about your reconciliation. This I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen.
Good morning. For the last several weeks, we have been using the book of Job as our scriptural reference. This week's scripture comes from Job 38, 2 through 7, and 34 through 41. And pres it presents the mystery and majesty of God. Then the Lord spoke out to Job out of the storm. He said, who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you will answer me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang together and the angels shouted for joy. Can you raise your voice to the clouds and cover yourself with a flood of water? Do you send the bolts of lightning on their way? Do they report to you, here we are? Do you give the ibis wisdom or the rooster understanding? Who has the wisdom to count the clouds? Who can tip over the water jars of the heavens? When the dust comes hard and the clots of earth stick together, do you hunt for the prey for the lioness to satisfy the hunger of the lions? When they crouch in their dens or lie in wait in a thicket, who provides food for the raven when its young cry out to God and wonder for lack of food? We are in awe of the infinite mystery of God. And that is our theme this morning, infinite mystery. I had an experience with the infinite mystery while rushing to work the other day. It was early in the morning, but traffic in Savannah is often very thick. So I was sitting in my car worrying about getting to work on time. While sitting there, I remembered my mom telling me about how part of her morning routine was listening to her meditation music. Her playlist included songs like Anna Kendrick's and Justin Timberlake's cover of True Colors and Come As You Are by Crowder. I remembered listening to that playlist on a day I was feeling sick and almost immediately the pain that I had been feeling in my abdomen eased. So I decided to listen to my own meditation music while I was stuck in, stuck in traffic. I couldn't decide on what to listen to so I picked a random playlist off of YouTube. A few songs in, I found a song I recognized, God's Not Dead by the Newsboys. It had been some time since I would heard the song. Heck, it had been a while since I would listened to Christian music on my own. So I skipped whatever song was next and chose the Newsboys song. Within the first few notes, I felt like something had slammed into my chest and tears gathered in my eyes. It had been so long since I felt the Holy Spirit in such a way. I felt like I had been neglecting my relationship with my God. Moving to a new city, meeting new people, getting a new job, starting a new semester in college, my spiritual well-being had been pushed to the back of my mind, but he had still been keeping up with me. The biggest example was the car accident I had. It had been raining, and it was around the first few days of my job. I was still getting used to the routes to and from work, and for some reason that day, Google Maps decided to stop working properly. It made me a bit lost. I finally found my way off the highway that Google Maps had unfortunately put me on. However, it required me to slow down a bit to merge into the exit lane. While the gray 
the gray car behind me didn't really like that because they came so close behind me. They pulled up so closely behind me that not only did it obscure my vision somewhat, but it obscured the view of the white car that had already pulled into the exit lane and was picking up speed. The white car collided with my side, with the side of my car, so hard that I was thrown back into the main road. I found out later not only had the accident told on my car, but if the white car had hit me any harder or any further down my car, I might have been put in the hospital or killed. Because what I hadn't realized was next to the exit where the accident happened, was a drop-off that went 20 feet down. And there was a break in the railing right where my car had been. Had I been hit in any other way, I would have dropped. I would have dropped 20 feet straight down. It still scares me. It makes my mom sick. But I'm okay, and I'm glad for it. I used to jokingly say that my guardian angel was having a rough time keeping me safe. And now I definitely believe it. They definitely deserve a raise after this. After all, this isn't the first time they've had to pull me out of the ringer. Many of you have probably heard my mother already tell this story a few times. But when I was young, Some people got together to paint the Jackson Street Church. Now my mother had been pleading with them not to leave the door open because she knew I would run out. I was a toddler. I didn't have the common sense to know that running out on the street was a bad idea. Unfortunately, nobody listened to her and kept propping the door open because of the fumes. Of course, when my mom turned around, I was gone. I don't even remember this day. I don't remember why I ran out. But my mom found me, not long after, outside talking to a man that nobody knew. Not around there anyway. He reassured my mother that he hadn't touched me, but he didn't want me to be lost. He wanted people to find me. In a panic, my mom scooped me up and rushed back inside. Regretfully, she felt bad that she hadn't thanked him then. Now my grandmother, she thanked him and reassured my mom that she had done so, but my mother wasn't gonna be deterred. She was gonna thank the man. Unfortunately, Despite him saying that he lived around the area, nobody knew who. Nobody knew where he lived. Of course, I don't remember anything. I was too young. But my grandmother, she doesn't remember much about him. My mom has a vague memory of him. But all three of us agree when the story's mentioned that it had to have been an angel. My guardian angel. They say God works in mysterious ways. And God's a mystery to us. But when I think of mystery, I think of something that needs to be solved. I grew up loving mystery shows and mystery books. I always wanted to solve them, find the culprit, find out what had happened. But that 
that's not what God is. He's not something that needs to be solved. His plan is not something that needs to be solved. Almost everything about God is unknown to us, and that's okay. All we need is to have faith in Him. Hebrews 11 says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. I've always trusted in God to take care of me. He's never failed me. I was listening to God's Not Dead again on my way to work Tuesday. I noticed a verse in it that I hadn't the first time I had listened to it in a while. Let hope arise and make darkness hide. My faith is dead. I need a resurrection somehow. Now I'm lost in your freedom. In this world, I'll overcome. My God's not dead. He's surely alive. He's living on the inside, roaring like a lion. When I heard it, I realized that that was what was happening. My faith wasn't dead. It just was being given new life. God was showing me that no matter what happened, he'd always stick beside me. I never blame God for anything. I couldn't. It didn't feel right. Instead, I blamed my lack of readiness or ability. I would ask God why things would turn out this way, but I never thought of him as the cause for horrible events. To me, these were caused by human decisions, or if it was him, it was a part of a plan that I didn't understand. When I was younger, I would ask questions like, why can't I walk on water? Why can't I see angels? But as I got older, the questions became, why can't I heal them? Why can't I save them? Am I not worthy enough? Strong enough? I wanted to perform miracles as Jesus had. Raising the dead, healing the sick, injured and dying, giving sight and hearing to the ones who needed it. I wanted to do these things to save myself and others the pain and suffering. But I never seemed to be able to do it to the capacity I wanted. I would constantly ask God, why wasn't I strong enough or capable enough to save people that I care about? I cannot remember the answer that I was given back then. But I was reminded of it recently. I remembered two stories I had heard. The first story was of the woman who touched Jesus' robes to be healed. Mark 5. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. A woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had been suffering greatly under the care of many doctors and spent all she had, but instead she got worse instead of better. When she'd heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought if I could only touch his clothes, I would be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped. She felt her body was free from the suffering. Once Jesus realized that power had gone out of him, he turned around to, in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see all of these people crowding against you, his disciples answered. And yet you ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell 
at his feet, trembling in fear. She told him the whole truth. He said to her daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. At first I thought that this meant that my faith wasn't strong enough. I mean, the woman's faith was so strong. She only touched Jesus' clothes and was healed. But I realized it's not because my faith is not strong enough. My abilities just lie somewhere else. The other story is a bit sillier. It's one my grandfather told me when I was younger. It was, really, it was originally a parable type of joke. And never in my life did I think that I would be using it as a sermon. Now it has been a while since I heard it. So forgive me, Pap, if I don't remember it quite right. And the story was about three churchmen who were out fishing. I can't remember if it was a lake or a river. I just remember that there was a store on the shoreline. After being out on the lake for a while, or river, one of the men says that he wants a drink. So he asks the others if they want anything. After receiving their answers, the man steps out of the boat, walks across the water to the store. The third man's baffled. How did he do that? When the first man comes back, the third man asks him, how did you do that? The first man said, faith. So they're out in the water a little longer, and then the second man says he wants a snack. Ask the others if they want anything. After receiving their answers, he does the same thing the first man did. He steps out of the boat and walks across the water to the store. Now the third man's baffled and irritated. When the second man comes back, he asks the second man, How'd you do it? The second man says, Faith. So the third man finally says, Well, I have faith, so I should be able to walk on water too. So he steps out of the boat and sinks. He gets back in the boat with the two helping him. And before they can stop him, he tries again. He does this several more times before the second man whispers to the first man, do you think we should tell him where the stumps are? Now I don't remember why I remember that story, but I believe it's because faith is great, but it requires some knowledge to make it work. In Job's dialogue with God, God showed mankind and womankind that we were a part of his creation. Yet to us, he came. God challenged the idea that Job and his friends ever can understand God. But regardless of how small humankind is in the grand scheme, we are privileged to have a relationship with him. He continues to interact with us, to respond to our prayers and supplications, to guide us and direct us. We have the privilege of glimpsing the wonder and glory of God with us. So nowadays I focus on the house of life, particularly how can I best serve God and how can I be the best disciple I can be? Why well, never seem to work as well as how does? I also focus on obtaining knowledge that I need to carry out his instructions because it's okay to leave some mystery, but some knowledge is needed too. God understands the wise. Our job is to understand the hows of life and keep God and his infinite mystery at the center of everything. What is the mystery in your life? What experiences have you had? Take the time today to remember and relish those experiences, those blessings that God has provided. Remind yourself 
that there are so many more experiences of the infant mystery still to come. As Rabindranath Tagore said, the touch of an infant mystery passes over the trivial and the familiar, making it break out into ineffable, ineffable music. The trees, the stars, and the blue hills ache with a meaning which can never be uttered in words. Allow that touch of mystery to help break your soul into music with a meaning you feel but can never express in words, only actions. And then allow that drive to feel your actions and let the infinite mystery inspire you to carry out his mission here on earth. So now we are going to do our responsive reading. Um, it will be up for you, and I will read the leader part, and if you would read the people part. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. You are clothed with honor and majesty. In wisdom, you have made them all. Praise the Lord.
We have heard you in the whirlwind. We have heard you when friends cry out for help. We have heard you when we see others' pain. We have heard you call us to respond. Help us to listen carefully, learn daily, and be your presence in this world. And God's people say, Amen. Amen.